Hey everybody, it's Ben. I am here at day two at Fully Charged Live, and with me here is Mike, and Mike has a Tesla Model X towing a trailer, and I get a lot of people asking if they can tow, you know, go camping, pull utility trailers, things like that, with an electric car, and Mike, what's the short answer to that? Darn right you can. <laughs> I've gone as far as 193 miles with a tailwind. That doesn't count. I can go typically 120 to 150 without any problem, but I like to only go 80 to 120, because then you're only going to charge to about 80%, which is fast. You know how that last 20% takes a long time? So by cutting it down to that kind of range, and usually it's city to city distances, most of the time that's about what you're going to find is typical. And so we did a trip, 4,800 miles, 3,800 miles towing the trailer, uh, and it took two months. We were just off having ourselves a great time recharging at the state parks or RV parks. So some of the times we weren't even hitting charge. That's right. And you uh, full charge when you pull out two or three days? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, in fact, if you've got a, one of the uh, 50 amp circuits, what they call 50 amps, it's really 240 volt circuit, overnight will basically bring you up to where you could leave the next day. Right. And, and uh, even coming in pretty low. And how, much, how much does this trailer weigh? 2,200 pounds, yeah. It's a very nice, lightweight, aerodynamic. The main, the main thing, the dominant consumption of energy is actually aerodynamics rather than weight. It's, it's all aero. I mean, 520 horsepower on the test lags. It, it can pull that trailer as if it's not even there. Grades, no problem. It's all easy. But it's energy management, and it's the aerodynamics that suck the energy away more than anything else. Those are called vortex generators, and they're, they're, you would expect them to perhaps be good for about 5% reduction in, in uh, energy consumption yeah, 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 yeah. and the way they work is that you notice there's there's all sorts of junk that sticks out handles and grates and you know windows so the airflow right next to the body gets slowed down there's what they call a boundary layer it's an inch thick or, or so and that slow moving air does not stick turns around rounded corner in the back. So the way the vortex generator works is that it scoops that slow moving air away and faster moving air has to swirl down onto that surface. And the faster moving air will stick better and will go around the curve further which collapses the weight to a smaller size. That's how vortex generators work. Um, but you can see the the back, that can be, this This is a shower on, on this end. Oh, okay. Shower, full shower, head, all the comforts of home. We're not, oh. we're not ski, ski, skipping on that. Sink. Real bathroom. Real bathroom, right here, yep. And this is the, the table where you put your computer and you have your morning coffee and sit and chat with your wife and all of that. The back is the bed. You can put that into a table configuration, but we don't. Underneath is where our dog sleeps. So that's his little dog kennel. Wonderful little place, he loves it in there. And then on this side, the, this uh, propane stove. Here's the, here's the kitchen sink. Right there. So you got real cooking, real, real running water. Real running water. Got lots of storage, and then this is the cup supply. That's the party floor right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's what this is. Yeah, it's nice in here. Lots of space. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and then here, this is your this is your hanging locker. You got a nice wardrobe when you come in. Yeah, and the bug juice and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's got here. Right. It's all part of real camping. And so this this thing is a powered vent up top there then too right yep so you get get nice cool breezes coming through yep absolutely in fact if i if i turn this on you'll be able to see the a little bit of the aerodynamic trickery on the top 
on the fan enclosure in order to get it a smooth flow onto the fairing I, I built, it's got a lip on it. So there's a, actually a lip, a closure lip that goes up and down with the, with the fan cool. top in order to get that gap sealed. Yeah, this, it's a nice little trailer. You know, it's very nice. Can I uh, see the, the back end and have you talk about their aerodynamics? Let's go. There was an issue with the audio at this part here, but basically what Mike's doing is he's explaining about the aerodynamic improvements on the back, the lip over the fan, and then also the solar panel, how he has it mounted it so it's not on the roof and it actually adds to the aerodynamics of the trailer. Solar panel where it's not going to put heat into the top of the, of the camper, which here in Texas, that's important. Of course, it works as a sunscreen, and you can see you can see a little here output from the solar panel. The wires go straight into this panel, which panel that, that's like gator board or you can like core you, you can take a room wall. take look up from the bottom and you'll see exactly what it oh, is. Nice. There you go. And then the wire shoots in, short shot to the battery box, which is right there. Tell me about the aerodynamics of, of this component right here. Yeah, the vertical part can act what they call a splitter plate to be curling big coordinated vortex structures off the trailer from the right, from the left. They call that vortex shedding. A lot of energy goes into creating those in the way of those, they have to be smaller, and even if they do get shed, they don't take as much energy away. The bigger gain is from the top, trying to bring the flow further down. Flow attached to the vehicle longer, so that the weight gets smaller. When you look at highly straight, try to bring that flow completely back. Well, that's, that's not very practical for vehicles on the road. It gets very long. But what you can do is induce the wake into thinking that the vehicle's somewhat longer than it really is by getting that wake to collapse. Yep, and the reason for the streamers is that you get a vehicle, a, a chase vehicle, that will follow along behind and you can take a look and see whether the O is attached and you're getting a nice, clean flow of air swirling around and moving erratically, in which case you know that the air is not staying attached to the vehicle. Yeah, these, these are commercially available off of Amazon, only they don't quite fit. And uh, they're, less, they're less than a pound each. If you're willing to cut them to size, then you just slam them in there and they fit inside the rim. <laughs> nice lightweight plastic. Yeah, it's just a plastic one. And now for your, your fender cover, that's that's just corrugated plastic. That's yeah. like political sign material. And I'll, I'll go get something better someday, but when we, this got done on the trip, it's like, what do they have here in Green Acres out in the boondocks that I can get to do this project? Because I want to see if it works. So this is what they had, so that's what I bought. <laughs> Last summer we did uh, 4,800 miles. So it was really a nice, nice extended trip that uh, we did. And lots of data from it. How much energy we used in various conditions, in the hills, on the flats, with headwinds, with tailwinds. You know, it's, I can't imagine anybody I'd rather share the information with more than you. It just so <laughs> happens that I have a readout of the information right here. You can have this. Very cool. Take it with you and photograph it better, or I can send an electronic copy of it. Uh, yeah, if I could get an electronic copy, it would be Yeah, fantastic. that's even that's even better. But um, but yeah, you, you're tracking all that and can share it with people then. This is real data. This is the real world. How much charge did we have when we started? How much charge did we have when we finished? What were the conditions on the road that day? Was it a headwind, a crosswind, a tailwind, no wind, whatever it was? These are the kind of numbers and distances you can expect to get in the real world. This 
is an AC DC cooler. And it it is it's only pulling 27 watts. The Tesla has a 12 volt output right there. So you just plug it in. I do the same thing, Dolomax. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just plug it in. <laughs> and we, on this extended trip, one of the things we found was we were spending a lot of time and a lot of time going to get ice all the time because we were initially using coolers. Well, you're forever schlepping ice, and the worst part, the, my, my wife really hates of schlepping ice, you're also getting water in your food. This fixes that problem. So you got your ice and your iceless. Yeah, this, what you do, you want, for your margaritas, you're going to want some ice, right? So you plug this into the trailer once you're on shore power. You could run it with an inverter, but we're not going to be having our evening drinks until we're at the site plugged in. So you plug it in, set it on the outside of the trailer, makes a pound an hour. Do it with electric. Do you have a dog? Do you have several dogs? <laughs> if you do, this is what you want. Hop right in. Yeah. There's still room on the floor in front of it for snack boxes and a cooler with ice or whatever, right? So you have access to that right there. But the dogs have a really nice spot. So you absolutely, I mean, can you camp electrically? We did it for two months. We're going to do it again. It was really good. Uh, so Mike, thank you so much for giving me the grand tour and uh, letting people know that yes, you absolutely can tow, you can go camping, do all that kind of stuff uh, with an electric vehicle. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Until next time, stay charged up. <laughs> thank you. I hope you liked this video. If you could do me a favor, please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, spread this video around. It really does uh, make it possible for me to be able to make videos like this and keep making more and make them better. Maybe uh, get a little bit of uh, improved audio equipment. Thanks a lot. See you next time.